Hi everyone, it's Belinda Ellsworth, and I am so excited to be able to share with you today. We are gonna have a great time together. I really wish I could be there in person, and I know that next year we can make that happen when you guys double the size of that room, and I am confident with the way that you guys are growing right now that you certainly will be able to do that. You know, I've known Colleen for a very long time, and it's been very exciting this past year to be able to work with her with your inspiration at home and to just see the fabulous growth that this company is experiencing is so exciting. And so I am here just to share with you a little bit today about tastings. After all, that is the most important part of your business is the tasting. From that tasting, you're able to get everything that you absolutely need. You're able to sell product because as people can try the product in person, and experience it and see all the wonderful things they can do with it, they're gonna be more inclined to purchase it. You're also gonna get new tastings, which are gonna allow you to continue and grow your business and allow more people to experience the product. And that really is the heartbeat. We call bookings the heartbeat of your business. And then of course, the very best place to get uh, sponsors is from your actual tastings. They get to watch your job in action and they get a really good understanding of really what is involved. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how to do the perfect tasting. Before we get into that though, I really want to talk with you about the three reasons why people do book parties or tastings and the three reasons why they don't. I think this is very helpful for you to get an overall understanding of what kinds of things can you do to help contribute to the things that cause people to really book tastings. And the number one reason, and we have done, been, I've been a part of several different focus groups, and it's been very exciting to just get that feedback from people on why they attend parties and what they really expect out of that experience. And the number one reason continually is fun. And I know for many of you, you probably think it's free product. And when you understand that free and discounted products become secondary, they actually are number two of why someone would choose to host a tasting. When you really grasp that number one is fun, that makes all the difference in the world because you want to make sure that that's indeed what you're doing is having a good time. Now, it's easy to have a good time because you're tasting food and everyone enjoys that. In fact, that's one of the other real criterias of what people want in a party is they want to socialize, they love the eating, drinking, visiting with one another, and they want it to be an overall fun experience. They want to learn something new. So their idea of fun is that it was entertaining as well as educational at the same time without too much emphasis on the education. So what the consumer today wants is really quite a lot. But the other thing that we heard in focus groups, hands down, was I want it to be interactive. I want to participate. And what I think is that puts you guys in such an absolute perfect position of what the consumer wants today in a home party or home tasting. Because you provide all of those things. You provide entertainment. You provide socializing. You provide the food. You provide... Um, education on how to use these products and how it's going to make their lives easier and they get to interact by trying these fabulous products. So really you guys have that in the bag hands down but make sure that you understand that that whole experience within itself really is number one. Number two is free and discounted products and people are happy to get the free and discounted products. They just don't want an overemphasis put on this at the party itself. They want the reason that they're having the party to be, I want to provide an amazing experience for my friends. So keep that in mind. So yes, they're happy with the free and discounted products for sure, but they just don't want the emphasis put on that. And the third reason is their willingness to help a friend. And that isn't only the current host who's going to get additional benefits, but it is their own friends because you are going to be teaching them how to save time in the kitchen. You're going to be teaching them how to save money by creating these gourmet meals right in their own homes. So when you can speak to words like that, and that is two things that bring added value to people today is that they can save time and they can save money. So when you can use that type of verbiage, people are going to be much more inclined 
to think, yes, this is going to be extremely beneficial for my friends. So let's talk about the three reasons then why they don't. And the first is really quite simple, but yet it's overlooked so often, and that is that you do not ask. Now, so often people think they ask, but it's like in the middle of the tasting, they say something like, oh, and ladies, if you'd like to have your own tasting, please let me know. Well, that's not really an ask. That's kind of informing people. Um, the other thing that you would get a good, a good time to do the ask is at checkout when you are sitting down with each individual customer and you're writing up their order. And what we find during this period of time so often is that the, the customer is really in deep thought about, okay, you know, what exactly do I want to get today? Obviously, many times they're unable to afford everything, so they're really thinking hard about, okay, and they're adding in their head, like, okay, if I get this, it's going to cost this much, if I get this, and they're adding, and they're thinking, well, do I really want this, or do I want this more? Should I get this oil? Should I get this vinegar? They're thinking about all the different uh, products that they really like to get and which ones they should get first. Many times while they're sitting in this deep thinking, you pop up and say, so Sandy, would you like to host your own tasting? And their first inclination is to look up and say, mm, I'm good, I I'm all set, thanks, no, that's all right, that's okay. And so what you have to understand is that this really brings us to the second reason of why people don't book the tasting. We want to not interrupt that train of thought. We want to get them to the happy place because the left side of the brain really is all about adding, thinking, and analytics, figuring things out, and the right side is the happy place. And that's where we want to get people. So how do you do that? When people are making their selections, you should compliment them on their selections saying, oh, you're going to love this. Oh my gosh, this guacamole, it goes with absolutely, you can use it for everything. You can use it in your eggs in the morning. You can use it for, you know, this. You can create a dip out of it. You can cook with it. You can use it as rub. So when people understand this, they're like, oh, wow, really? Okay, good. I made a good choice. People want to feel like they made a good choice. So you want to compliment them on their selections, letting them know how versatile that that product is, how they'll be able to use it, how yummy it is, how it's going to make their meals taste so much better. Then you're going to ask her a couple of key questions. So well, did you have fun tonight, Mary? Um, you know what? I did. Great. So would you consider having your own tasting with your friends? And she says, um, when you get that hesitation, and sometimes it'll be like, I'd like to, but I just, I've got a lot going on. I'm really, really busy. So quickly ask the three go-to questions. And that is, well, Mary, you had a good time tonight. I did. And are there still some additional products that you would really like to get? Um, there is for sure. And do you think your friends would enjoy this experience? Oh, I'm sure that they would. Well, Mary, then it sounds like it's a matter of just finding the right time out of your very busy schedule. Would you not agree with that? Yes, I would. Okay, wonderful. So if you were to have a tasting, what do you think would work better for you? Would it be a weekday? Would it be a weekend? And she'll pick. This is what people do in this situation is they choose. So she says, mm, probably, probably a weekend would be better. Okay, wonderful. We've got a couple of great choices for you. We can do a fun Friday night party. This is if you've got a real lively group of friends and they just want to have a really good time. We can do Friday evening or Saturday morning brunches have really been popular as well. We could go Saturday morning, say 10, 30, 11. We can serve some fun things like more of a, a brunch style. And these are really popular because people have their entire Saturday then to do whatever they want. Or we can do Sunday afternoon, say after church. These are popular as well, say maybe 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Which one of those is more appealing to you? She says, mm, probably the Friday night. I've got a pretty, pretty lively group of friends that I think they'll enjoy that. Great. So do you want to go... 6.30, 7, 7.30, which one do you think is going to work better? Um, probably 7 o'clock is going to be the best. 
Wonderful. Now, I've got a couple of Fridays here where I can fit you into my calendar, get, let you take advantage of some of these great specials we have going on, and I'm able to give Mary all of her extra goodies, okay? So I've got the 14th and I've got the 28th. Which one of those do you think would be better for you? Mm, probably the 28th. Okay, awesome. So here's what we've got for you, Sandy. We've got the 28th at seven o'clock and on a Friday night and I'm going to do all the work and your friends are absolutely going to have a fantastic time and you're going to get to relax with your friends and at the end of the night go shopping on me. So what do you say? Okay, let's do it. That is how you book tastings, which brings us to the second reason of why people don't book and that is they simply can't make a decision. The truth of it is, is people are busy. We've got busier lives than we've ever had before and people just, any free minute they have, they put something else in there, whether it's their kids' activities or uh, something in the community that they're attending. We just have a tendency to fill our calendars up. But when they're sitting there relaxing, tasting the great food, you know, it's hard for them to think. All they can think of is, oh gosh, my calendar's just way too busy. So when we give them choices and when we break it down, it helps them come to a decision. And that is number two is that, and it's the biggest, people simply can't make a decision. So we want to help give them choices. And the third reason really is fear. And everyone says fear that, you know, no one will come. But the real fear is, will people want to come? And the fear is that people will think they're doing the party just to get free stuff. And so how can we overcome this fear? It's really in the way that you do host coaching. And I'm doing a webinar this Wednesday night where I'm going to go into great detail on this. And I would encourage you to make sure that you tune in for that or listen to the replay because it's going to really complement the session I'm doing with you today very nicely. So I hope that you'll all uh, tune into that this Wednesday night. So now um, she's sitting here thinking that maybe, you know, oh, I don't know. I don't want my friends to feel this way. So in that host coaching, we want to make sure that we give her good word choices of saying, you know, when inviting friends, let them know they're going to get to taste some fabulous foods. They're going to get to have a relaxed evening where we are going to um, just really share some amazing products, award-winning products with them. You are, we're going to teach your friends how to save time and how to save money in the kitchen. We're going to teach them some amazing, simple, easy recipes to make in under 30 minutes. So when you give value of why she's inviting her friends, this really takes that fear away that I'm not doing it just to get free stuff. And, you know, I, I don't want my friends to think, what am I coming to? No, my friends, I've got a lot of value to offer to my friends. So when you really implement that into your tasting, you're going to see really different results than maybe that you've already seen. So what I want to talk with you about right now is the six key elements to a successful tasting. And this is just really a, an overview. Of course, you all do your tastings in a little bit different ways and, you know, you serve different uh, products. But this is just kind of the basic, some basic key elements that you want to have in what, however you choose to do your tasting or whatever products you choose to showcase in that tasting. So there are six key. And I've already given you just a little bit of uh, feedback of what we've gotten from focus groups today in 2015 of what they want from that party experience. So we're keeping that in mind. One of the other things that was said is, I don't like when I come and, you know, they're standing by the table and it's almost like they're guarding it. So the very first step, because we're setting the stage, we're creating an atmosphere that evening for something super exciting. So the first step is called the meet and greet. And you want to move away from your table. So if you've got the products set up or maybe you have them on a kitchen counter, you want to move away from that area. 
In fact, many times the host is maybe serving drinks or, you know, getting people situated and, and uh, welcoming them as they come in. So you could even be the one to answer the door sometimes if she's in the kitchen getting everything ready. But you need to be available. So you want to make sure that you're already set up, that you get there in plenty of time so that you can do an effective meet and greet. And the way that you do that is simply approach each person as they're coming into the room and say, hi, I'm Belinda and you are? I'm Carol. Well, Carol, thank you so much for coming this evening. Is this your first time uh, at a your Inspiration at Home tasting? It is. Oh, well, that is fantastic. You are going to get to sample some amazing products this evening. You're going to be blown away. And I can't wait uh, to share these with you. So thank you so much for coming. And she says, well, thank you. I'm really, I'm excited. Okay, great. So we want to just get out there. If they say, oh I, oh, I have been to one. Well, great. You're going to be excited to know you just released a couple of new fabulous products I can't wait to share with you. Or tonight, oh my gosh, I've got the most amazing recipes that we're going to be sharing with you. So, oh, I'm so glad you came. You want, one of the key reasons of why people book is because they like you. That's part of the whole fun is you were likable and they feel like they can trust you with their friends. So we want to create that energy from the minute that the guests walk in the door. So meet and greet. And a good way to do that is, I know it's hard to exactly see me, I, I'm normally standing when I do these events, but you want to extend your hand and you want to lean in and you want to smile, make eye contact, and then you want to do a nice handshake. You want it to be firm, but not bone crushing, and you don't want it to be like this little limpy thing that people go, oh, I don't, I don't care about that. They almost want to brush it off. So it's just lean in. Hi, my name is Belinda and you are? And that's one way to do that. Another, if you don't want to do that with every single person is, hi, I'm Belinda and I'll be, I'll be doing the party this evening. How do you know Sandy? So ask them how they know the host. This sometimes gives you some great information as well. And just as a really nice icebreaker as well as makes people think, wow, you're super nice and, and I'm glad I'm here and this is going to be a lot of fun. So that is your meet and greet. Number two is the opening. And the opening is probably one of the most important things that you will say at your tasting. It's the most important piece of real estate anyway, let's put it that way. And why is that? Because number one, you have their complete undivided attention. So people are actually listening. Once people start sampling the products, oh my gosh, they're like, oh, this is so good, and oh, this is yummy, and you know what, you could use that on, you could use it for this, you could use it for that, and that's what we want. We want the interaction of the guests. So it really is important that um, that we are creating that that energy and we get out what we want to say at the very beginning. So we have their complete undivided attention. The second reason is first impressions. So people will get a, an idea of you or a, a first impression of you the very first words that you speak, right? Now we've already tried to create that a little bit in the meet and greet, but some people you're gonna end up missing because they'll come in right at the last minute, they'll sit down, so maybe you did not get a chance to meet every single person. So this opening could be the first time that people are actually hearing you speak. Now. What I see a lot of people do is they waste this precious piece of real estate of time in a couple of ways. Um, one, they start out by saying, hi everyone, you know, I'm Belinda and I'd like to tell you a little bit about how your inspiration at home got started. Well, you know what? Nobody really cares. And um, maybe later on you can talk about the company and where it originated and some of their award-winning products, that would be a good thing to talk about. But the history of the company and how it all came to pass, and especially I know many of you coming from, uh, you know, having another name of that company, it's like, 
people then you don't have to explain that it used to be this and now we're this I would not go into all those details you know just we're, we'll, we'll t tell you how to do that in just a second the other thing that I see people do is they start off the party or the tasting with hi everyone I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself and how I got involved with this company and people really don't care for that either at that very first few moments they want to know why am I here what am I going to benefit from this and so that's truly what we want to address with these individuals now another thing that I see especially women do now men are kind of funny and it, and it this is honestly I've done this a thousand times and I see it all of the time men have this tendency when they're kind of either nervous or haven't really thought about exactly what they're going to say they have a tendency to clear their throats <clears throat> And stammer, ah, uh, yes, welcome, everyone. It's this sort of drawn out. But women add this high pitch at the end of all their phrases. I like to call it winging it because that is what it sounds like. So many of you, the very first impression that people have is, Hi, my name is Cindy, and I'm going to be doing the tasting, and I'd really like to thank Sandy for having the tasting at wing, 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 wing. <coughs> this is annoying. So you really want to make sure that you're coming out of that gate, just like almost like a horse coming out of a gate, that you are strong, and you're really going to wow their socks off, okay? So uh, an opening might, might sound something more like this. Hi everyone, my name is Belinda and I'm so excited to be here with you this evening. Quick show of hands, how many of you have never been to your Inspiration at Home tasting? Well ladies, you are in for a treat this evening because we are bringing you some of the most amazing products to add to your kitchen on the market today. In fact, so many of them are award-winning products that are going to help you save time, money in the kitchen, and we're honestly going to take that stress out of meal planning, teaching you simple, easy recipes to make in a matter of minutes. You are going to be blown away. In fact, you're going to fall in love with so many of our wonderful products that it may be hard to choose which ones to start with. You might find that you're unable to get everything that you want this evening. And the best way to take care of that, honestly, is simply by having your own tasting, just like Sandy is doing here this evening. You know, we treat our hosts very special, and most will walk away with a generous shopping spree and the chance to shop at 50% off. And ladies, as you watch me do the tasting this evening, you're going to find that my job is a lot of fun and it's pretty easy. And maybe many of you are looking for a way to add an extra stream of income to your household budget. You know, on an average, we make between uh, $150 to $200 in an evening. So um, with that, uh, if any one of you would like to take home some information with you this evening, I would be more than happy to send you home with that. Now, I would really like to thank Sandy for having me in her home. I would like to thank all of you for coming. And now I would like to introduce you to the wonderful world of your inspiration at home. That's an opening. And so what I've done there is I have covered three of the basic things we're going to do for them. I'm going to help them with their shopping experience. They can host and save money and they can find out more about this amazing opportunity and start earning an income. So those are the three things that I have laid out in that opening. Now, I'll kind of go over that again with you because people ask me all the time, oh my gosh, can you do it again? So again, name strong. In fact, practice in front of the mirror, you know. Hi, I'm I'm Belinda. No, I'm Belinda. I'm Belinda. So I want you guys to get that straight, okay? So then you hit it with a positive affirmation. Now the one I used is, ladies, you know, how many of you have never been? Great. Well, you are in for a treat. A couple of other ones that you can say is, ladies, you're going to be so glad that you came this evening. 
or ladies, we're going to have so much fun tonight. Any one of those is a great positive affirmation. And then you are going to punch it with three things that you are going to do for them. Now, some of the ones I said is we're going to bring some of the best award-winning products to them. We are going to show them how to save time and money in the kitchen, and we're gonna take the stress out of meal planning by teaching them simple, easy recipes to make in a matter of minutes. Those are the three I used, but you can think about, you know, what are the three things I want to punch um, in that opening that I'm doing for them? Because when they feel that, like, wow, I'm glad I'm here, I'm glad I came. Then I tell them that, you know, they're going to fall in love with so many of the products that possibly they're not going to be able to buy everything they want tonight. Great way to take care of that is simply by hosting. We treat our hosts very special. Most will walk away with a generous shopping spree and the chance to shop at 50% off. Then I touch on the opportunity. Now, ladies, as you watch me do the tasting this evening, you'll see that my job is fun and it's pretty simple. And maybe many of you are looking for a way to add an extra stream of income to your household budget. Uh, and I realized when I did it a few minutes ago, I should have been talking in pounds and not dollars. So I, I didn't write down all my little tiny notes here that might be applicable for you guys. So I apologize. So maybe that's a hundred pounds or whatever the equivalent of what you earn in an evening. So pick on an average, like give a range um, from 100 to 150 or 75 to whatever, whatever it is, okay? So say on an average, we make this in an evening. If any one of you would just like some more information, you know, we are a, really a brand new company. We, it is a ground floor opportunity, and I would be happy to have any one of you uh, take a look at this exciting venture. So that's your your the three things that you're going to cover, and then you're going to thank your host and welcome the guest and say, now I'd like to introduce you to the wonderful world of your inspiration at home. So that is the way that you do that opening. Now we move into the sort of guts of the presentation. And this is where many of you you really have this part down or you know exactly what you're going to serve or you'll change it up depending on what the host says she would like served. So this is where it, it can change a lot, right, in this piece right here. However, there are a couple of key strategies that you want to use in this particular segment that are going to help increase your sales, that are going to help people think, you know what, this was awesome and I do want one of these. I'm going to do this for my friends. So there's a couple of things in the presentation piece or showing of the products. That's what this third segment is. So the first thing is we want to keep this presentation to about 20 to 25 minutes. That's what we hear in the focus groups. People don't want you talking for a really long time. They want you to highlight and feature some of the most popular products or obviously what you're talking about that day. So it is important if this is going to be short and to the point that we are showing in groupings, that we are talking about as many products as we can in one at one time. So what I mean by that is um, instead of just going, oh, this next item is our this dip and this next item is this rub. So we want to think about recipes that we can pull in four or five different items, like the, the cheese ball that has uh, a dip and it's got the uh, caramelized um, uh, vinegar. So these are the different things. If you can bring in recipes that talk about, say, four products, these are then groupings. Or you can even group things together. And, you know, here's a dip, here's a rub, here's this, here's a that. So if you you want to show in sets or groupings because a lot of times then people will say, oh, I want I want everything to make that. That was amazing. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely going to get those four items. This is how we increase our, our tasting average as well as it really paints a picture instead of just one odds. So you don't, you want to stay away from one odds as much as you possibly can and you instead want to talk about sets or groupings. The next thing that you want to add to your presentation is testimonials. 
Testimonials are the single most powerful ingredient that prompts people to take action. So when people hear what other people said about the product, it's actually more believable. So you want to say things like, oh, I have one host and she loves this. Or I have one customer and she sent me an amazing recipe that she does with this product. It's incredible. And I've been using it actually in my tastings. So I love it that all my customers send me so many amazing ideas of the way that they've used our products. It's absolutely incredible. And I love it. It makes my job so much easier. So in doing that, I've talked about the believability to the customer. I've also talked that I don't need to come up with all these because actually my customers do too. So I've actually did a little um, sponsoring bid there or a little sponsoring seed. So these are the kinds of things that you want to add into that presentation. So use personal testimonials. And then the third piece is there's two different types of selling. There is descriptive selling and then there is emotional or benefit selling. And as salespeople, especially if you don't have a lot of previous experience, maybe you yourself, you know, went to a tasting and you said, oh my gosh, these products are amazing and I, I think I can do this. And so you, you don't have a lot of sales background. So it's very easy to fall in the trap of descriptive selling. And we don't want to come from that place. We want to come from benefit selling. And so instead of saying this next item is this and it's got these ingredients and it contains this and it's got no this, no that, blah, 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 blah. People like are a little bit interested and there's probably a couple things that, uh, you know, people are going to want to know about that. But they're going to want more of this next item, ladies, is amazing. And there are so many things that you can do with it. You can make this with it. If you normally make this meal, this will spice it up and just add an incredible amount of flavor. This next item is a must have in your kitchen. And it is so versatile and you can use it for so many things. So when we are talking about benefit selling, about how easy it's gonna make their meals, how it's gonna make them taste, how their friends are gonna be blown away and think that they slaved all day in the kitchen. So when we use phrases like that, that's more benefit selling versus describing all of the ingredients. Now a fun way, and I wouldn't do this with every product, but a fun way is when they're tasting it, maybe with one or, not, or two of the products, is say, okay, what do you taste in there? Let them guess some of the ingredients. That's a fun way if you do want to do that. With That way you get interaction of the guests and you're not just standing up there saying it, it contains this, it has this, it has this, it has this. That becomes boring. And then people also think, wow, her job is tough if you have to memorize all of that or know all of those ingredients. So we really wanna stay away from that and interact uh, with our guests as much as possible, but really more than anything is stay focused on what they're gonna be able to do with this, how this is gonna be an amazing product to have in their kitchen. Their kitchen's not complete without it and this is an item that they certainly don't wanna miss out on because oh my gosh, it's gonna make all the difference with all of their meals. Those are the kinds of word choices that you want to use in this particular segment. Now, number four. So just to go back, we've done number one is the meet and greet. Number two is the opening. Number three is the actual presentation of products itself. And number four is a booking talk. This is extremely important. So the booking talk, what Many of you do, we call it a zero or a 10. And uh, a zero is, um, so ladies, if you wanna have a tasting, let me know. That That's not a booking talk. And then yeah, some of you do a 10, and that's not good either. And what you do is you put all the focus on who's the current host. 
So let's say it's Sandy. We've been using Sandy a lot. So um, ladies, I'd like to take a moment now and tell you a little bit about what Sandy is doing. As a host, Sandy's going to receive, you know, 10% of her total sales in free products. Not only that, but she's entitled to half price items. She's going to get a half price item for this. If someone were to sign up this evening, if she gets bookings, so we go into all of that, and then if there's a host exclusive for the month, we go into those details. So what am I doing here? Well, there's several things I'm doing here. Number one, I'm host coaching before I even have a host. The other thing, if you go back to thinking about products, I'm actually describing being a hostess versus talking about the benefit. The benefit to who? Her friends. And I don't want to talk about Sandy. Sandy's at the, at the end of everything right now, right? The party's almost over. So why am I talking to them about what Sandy's getting? I need to talk to them about them. When you are doing a booking talk, you want to address it to the people that are sitting in the room. So instead, it might sound something like this. So ladies, I'm sure you have fallen in love with many of our wonderful products. Weren't they yummy? Oh my gosh. And you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, I can't get everything this evening. And you know, a nice shopping spree, getting some free products sure would be nice. Well, let me tell you how simple and easy it is. It honestly is just taking one night or one day out of your busy lives. And it takes no more time than the time you spent here this evening. And honestly, haven't you had fun here tonight? Well, that's how much fun we're going to have with your friends at your house. And they are going to be thanking you for inviting them in to try these fabulous products. They're going to appreciate you for creating a fun, entertaining evening. And you know what? I'm going to do all the work. I'm going to come in. I'm going to prepare the foods. I'm going to uh, entertain your guests. And all you have to do is sit back, relax, have a really fun time, and at the end of the night, go shopping on me. How wonderful is that? That's why I'm encouraging each and every one of you tonight. Just say yes. I'll work with you on a date that is suitable for you and your calendar. I promise. That is a booking talk, a booking commercial. So practice that. Number five is your sponsoring commercial or sponsoring talk. And we want to make sure that we do that as well. And usually that is probably right at the very end before you're going to start assisting with the orders. And so you might want to say something like, ladies, you've watched me do the tasting this evening. You've seen that my job is fun. And honestly, it is pretty simple. I mean, these products really sell themselves, quite honestly. And so maybe many of you are thinking, wow, you know, to make some extra money, to have these fabulous products, to be able to get them at a discount, that would be awesome. So if any one of you would just like to take home some information with you this evening, or would just like to know a little bit more about, you know, what we're all about, and you'd like to find out about this amazing ground floor opportunity, please let me know, and I would be more than happy to send you home with some information this evening. That is a sponsoring talk. So what we're doing here, without going into a whole hour on sponsoring, because I don't have that with you today, but what we're doing here is we're creating, we are creating a safe zone. We are letting people know that I'm not asking you to join. I'm asking you if you would just like to take a look, to know more information, to find out what we're all about. These are all called soft word choices instead of hard word choices are. If you think you would like to join, if you would like to get started, if you would like to order your kit today, those are all oh, I've got to make a decision versus the other arena is it's safe to take a look. Now, I call this creating the interest. And one of the things I'm going to cover real quickly with you is we do talk about five points of interest. And I think it would be uh, remiss of me not to go over what some of these are. So it's kind of 
sprinkled. Instead of you telling your whole life story, which a lot of you have either been taught to do or that's what you've seen other people do at other parties, um, we really want to do these five points of interest sprinkled throughout the entire tasting. And we did the first one at the very beginning. Remember, that was number one when we did the opening. We said, you know, watch me do this tasting and you'll see my job is fun and it's pretty simple. And if you'd like to take home some information with you, please let me know. That was our first one. Then two, three, and four is your I story, but it's sprinkled so that it doesn't sound overwhelming. So you might say something like when you're showing a product, you know, one of the reasons that I joined this company or what really drew me to this company was, um, you know, what the, the income is fabulous and my family and I are, are planning on a really awesome vacation that we've been able to take with our extra earnings. So talk a little bit about something about the money and maybe what you've been able to do with that. And then the third one, while you're still showing the products is, you know, in addition to a great income, this this company is so wonderful and they offer us great travel experiences. You might want to mention something about the trip or you might want to say what it's done for you personally. It's built your self-confidence or you love it that you can work it around your family schedule. So say something more personal in this third one. So one is the opening, then two, three, and four is your I story sprinkled through the presentation piece. And then number five, which we just did, is the actual sponsoring talk or commercial, which is at the very end. So that is number five. Number six is checkout. And I just want to talk a little bit about this. So once people, you've finished your presentation, the best thing that you can do is get people off their seats, right? And say, come on up to the table now. You know, you can still continue to sample some more of the foods that we have here. I've got a couple other products here you might want to take a look at that I didn't actually highlight or feature in the presentation. So you can have, if you have a couple of those out, but you want to get them up off their seats. And then you want to get a catalog in their, in their hands. And then you don't want to leave the table. You know, so often I see people go, I'm going to be in the living room writing up your orders. No, you want to stay where the action is. You want to stay right there by that product. And then if somebody comes up and sees maybe a product that you didn't talk about, you go, oh, this product is amazing. And so as you're explaining it, maybe another gal who's standing at the table is listening too. This is how we do what we call an extended party, if you will. So we're continuing to talk about a few more products. The other thing that you want to do right here is um, you want to make, be making suggestions or reminding them of what the ingredients were in that, you know, cheese ball that they just tasted. So you're kind of there. Then you want to mingle the room. Are you finding everything okay? Did you have any questions? Is there anything that I can help you out with? So these are just some of the, the simple things that you want to do. Now, the last thing is when somebody brings you up their order, don't just look at the total. I know it, we so badly want to do that, you know, look down and say, whoa. So, but look at what they bought and look at what they're missing and say, oh, uh, Clara, I see you've got everything here uh, to make this except for this item. Did you want to go ahead and add that? I see that you've got everything here to make uh, wonderful meals. Did you want to add something for a tasty dessert, like one of our yummy dukas? And so then they go, oh, yeah, you know what? I did want to do that. So just be mindful of what's on that order and then what are they missing? Because I see so often people just look at a total and then they don't make any suggestions. And then the person gets home and says, oh, I should have gotten something for that or I wish I would have gotten that. So you, you want to make sure that you're really looking at that um, complete order. And then as you're sitting there, you want to get her total and then you want to ask those questions. You know, if she had fun and, you know, compliment her on her selections and tell her what great choices they were. And then would she be interested in having her own tasting? This is a really good close. And some people really consider a full service checkout is then saying, um, and Clara, you know, were you interested in taking home some information and just finding a little bit more about what we're all about? 
um, you know what? Yes, if, if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. Let me let me go grab that uh, information for you. Or I've got an information packet right here. And you should have a little stack of them kind of as at checkout. You should have some host packets. So you can just be able to uh, the six of having a success. Really think about the way that your people want to see today. I know that you are going to have, and you are going to have people buying. You're going to have people wanting to host. And more importantly, you're going to have people wanting to join you. So I'm so excited that I had this brief time with you today. And I look forward to meeting all of you in person sometime soon. So thanks so much and uh, have a great rest of your conference. And thanks, Colleen, for adding me uh, to this day. It's been very special. Thank you so much.